Welcome, everybody, to the Mental Health Hour. Welcome in to all of our live viewers. Welcome in to the replay viewers over on YouTube and Twitch. And welcome to our live Q&A special, part two. We're very excited about this. How are you tonight, Gemma? Um, not too bad, not too bad. It's been a strange kind of day, but like not too bad. A Just trying to get this uh, Twitter to work. Twitter, Twitch. Yeah, Twitch. Twitch. Yeah, we're a little late tonight, uh, but we wanted to get everything together for this show. Um, we enjoy doing these shows, these Q and A's. Um, so what basically we have done is for the past month, we've been promoting this show and we've wanted you, the viewers to send us questions and uh, we will answer them live and we will answer them live. There we go. Yeah. Hello, Native Graffiti, Michelle. Good to see you. Uh, so what we're doing tonight is we've, prom we've promoted this uh, episode all last month, and um, we've had you guys send us questions anonymously. Um, Gemma, can you explain a little bit more about the, the Google form, please? Oh, yeah, you can um, go on to the Google Docs that we have and send, there's one that you can submit a, like an episode idea, and then there's the one we've been using for tonight where you can submit a question. It can be completely anonymous. It doesn't have to be named. You can put your name. For the purpose of tonight's show, I will not be reading out any names. And I tend to try and take the gender out of them if they are referring to anyone specific, so that it's more not aimed at anyone in particular, but also can be relevant for everybody else. Because the last thing I want to do is if somebody is sending a question about somebody, I don't really want them to know it's about them because it's not for that. But you can send in a question anonymously, um, about anything that you want to know about, really. And uh, we've had quite a few tonight. A ray of sunshine resubscribed mm. for one month at Tier 1. Thank you so much, guys. <clears throat> thank you for all the subs. Thank you for the bits. And thank you for all the support for this show. Uh, and a special thanks to Gemma as well for doing all the social uh, side of things as well. Um, this has been this is episode 40 and it has been a very fun time uh, that we've had on here on doing these broadcasts um, so and this uh, episode in particular uh, these episodes in particular are my favorite uh, I love engaging with you guys and um, seeing what is bothering you and what we can talk about. So without any further ado, let us get to some questions. Uh, Gemma will be uh, reading off from the Google Doc form. Um, and yes, thank you. Uh, 40th episode. I'm just wrecking the joint, don't mind me. <laughs> Knocking all the stuff all over. Well, well it's a celebration. We're it's our fortieth episode. You gotta. It is forty episodes, thirty-five together. Thirty-five yeah. together. Yeah. Um, kind of just stuck around, didn't I? Yeah. Happy fortieth. Um, I it, it it it. I shouldn't say that. It it will be next year. Your fortieth birthday. Next year. Yeah. I'm actually 38 at the moment, but you don't count this year. It's next year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. On with the questions. Yeah, let's get those. Um, go get it out of the cupboard quickly. I can't, Thomas. Excuse me. Do we have any questions about how to get kids to bed? Because I don't seem to be nailing that uh -oh. one really well. Thomas already. Yep. 
if uh, if anyone's got any answers to that one, please please feel free to let me know. Legal ones, preferably. Hello, Brian. All right, here we go. Hello, Michael. Hello, Shirley. Hello, Hello. Ray, uh, Raymond and Michelle. And I think we have got everybody. Um, all right, yes. On to the first question. Let's go. All right, there we go. Okay. Yep, we're on the way. So, how do I tell my family and friends that I have a medical condition that in time is going to get worse, where I will be wheelchair bound? I am worried that they won't want me around anymore. What can I do? And how should I even think about telling them? Wow, starting off strong. Hmm. Um, this is uh, something that you and your family should be going through together. Um, I don't know the current situation that you're in. Uh, however, um, I would think you would have somebody there with you um, getting uh, whatever diagnosis um, that has come about. Um, so really when, when you look at it, uh, just take your uh, take your time, sit down, explain what's going on, and uh, explain exactly how you feel. Make this moment about you because this is really about you. You know, um, it's completely okay to be um, selfish in this time uh, because uh, of the circumstances that uh, are, are you're handling uh, at that moment. Um, you just want to make it about you. So sit down with your family, explain exactly what's going on, sit down and explain how you feel, and sit down and explain what you need, what resources you can they can provide to you um, if if anything. Hacha, Mr. Med in the house. It's good to see you. Hello, Hattie. Good to see you as well. Um, and Shirley and Michael Joseph Murray. It's excellent to see everybody. Gemma, mm -hmm. are you are you good? Yeah, sorry about that. I had to go in That's there. Okay. That's okay. Did okay. you wanna did you wanna shed any uh, light on that question? Um, I basically I just mm -hmm. said you want to make this about yourself. Um, you want to, this, this, I don't know what the diagnosis is. I don't know <laughs> what you're going through. Um, but basically what I've said is you want to sit down, you want to talk with your family, you want to lay it out. You want to say exactly how you're feeling and, mm -hmm. and maybe what you need. Uh, it's okay to be selfish in these times. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think, depending on like the diagnosis and stuff like you can usually get like leaflets and things from hospitals so maybe get something like that and then go and talk to your family and say look you know I've been diagnosed with whatever it is you can give them some leaflets to look through in their own time because it might come as a shock I myself had to obviously tell my family what I've got and um, Depend. I guess it depends on the family and what it is, but just tell them what you've got. It is about you and going over what you've got, how it's going to affect you. And honestly, if they're your family, hopefully they will understand. Hopefully they will accept it. Same with any friends and things that you're telling. But as I found, not everybody does. And if if they don't, like that's something different in itself but like hopefully they will if they don't feel free to reach out um also like there's plenty of websites and things that will help try and make sure you go to a proper one like but there's plenty of websites that can give you information about the medical conditions you're going through make sure it is like a legitimate one that's the word i was looking for because yeah. these days you can Google anything and it will come up with terrible things. So don't do that. But um, hopefully they will all be there. 
the, like Michelle says, the, they will be there. Yeah. For you. Exactly. And accept that and help you through it. Unfortunately, Beautiful. not everybody does. But Beautifully said. Just remember that it's about you. Yep. But yeah, definitely. And I, as always, with any of these questions tonight, um, if you require or would like to uh, have further conversation about it, please reach back out to us uh, in the bio link, and mm -hmm. we will be happy to continue the conversation. But we're going to keep moving because we got, what, 16 questions came in? I think 14, 15. Yeah, yeah. somewhere around there. <laughs> Yeah, one of them wasn't a question. It was an episode request. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Next one. Friends are family, indeed. Mm hmm Right. So this one's probably for you. How do you know if you have a drink problem? Was there anything you noticed that looking back, the points, the points you should have noticed? So that's a, a great question. I get that one all the time. How do you recognize your drinking problem? Um, this is something that really I struggled with. Um, and it's, <clears throat> it is why it is step one of Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Getting to that point where you realize there is a problem is the hardest part of the whole process um, because nobody wants to think there's a problem at all. We all think we have control. We think we have um, constant uh, management of our life. And it just wasn't the case for me. My organs were shutting down and my body was saying, we're done here. We, we have nothing for you. Um, we need help. <laughs> so what I was doing was absolutely wrong. And it that's when it hit me. I mean, it really does take a smack in the face, laying in the hospital bed, somebody telling you, you're dying. Your organs are shutting down for it to register, for me at least. Um, and I'm assuming that's going to be for everybody. Um, because we nobody wants to think that there's a problem, right? Mm -hmm. We all want to feel like we have control. It's a normal feeling, um, and that's completely normal. Uh, and we don't want to think about rehab. We don't want to think about AA. We don't want to think about um, life without alcohol or anything like that. Jim in Chicagoland... Thank you for the resub. Good to see you. Uh, sorry, I'm missing some comments, guys. Um, I am on a diatribe right now <laughs> about alcohol. But it is good to see everybody in here tonight. Ray mm -hmm. and Jim. Hello, hello. Hello to everybody. So I hope that answers uh, a little bit of what it kind of... It really is just a a rock bottom moment when you when you realize that you have a drinking problem. Gemma, can you read that question back one more time? Uh, just the, the the question piece of mm -hmm. it. Uh, it just says, "How do you know if there if you have a drink problem?" And then, was there anything you noticed looking back? Yeah. So, it really is like a rock bottom moment. It it is. Uh, it, it was for me. It was it was literally laying in the hospital bed the first time, thinking, damn it, what did I do to myself? And they're, they're saying, you got pancreatitis, you can't drink anymore or you will die. And then fast forward, I get out of the hospital. I go live my life. I don't drink for two weeks. And um, then I'm like, my, my sick brain, my addicted brain says, yeah, you can drink, you can drink. Yeah, give it a try. See if it hurts. So you start drinking, and it doesn't hurt. And so you start getting into the bottles again, and yeah, then it starts hurting again. And next thing I know, my ass is back in the hospital 
uh, for another eight days. And they said, you're really doing some <laughs> proper damage to your, your mm. um, liver, kidneys, pancreas. You need to stop. You're dying. And so that was the catalyst moment. Um, that was the spark. That was the rock bottom. The, the moment where I, of clarity, where I said, wow, I have a problem. Mm -hmm. I can't stop. I, I know it's killing me and my brain will not allow me to stop. I still want to drink. So uh, anyway, I hope that helps. It, it is a, it is a rock bottom moment and you just, you, you roll with it. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody has to hit that and then we go from there. Yeah. Definitely. If anybody needs any more personalized information, you, they can message as well, can't they? Absolutely. I'm more than willing to chat with anybody about that. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I actually enjoy talking about that. So please reach out uh, for any further information. Mm -hmm. okay. Move on to the next question, Gemma. Okay. Okay, so we have my daughter was diagnosed with body dysmorphia a few weeks ago. I don't even know what it is. Can you help me out and explain anything about it? Thanks. Okay, so I actually have body dysmorphia. And you have a picture, don't you, that you put up yeah. to show that is exactly what body dysmorphia is like you can be any like for example there uh, you can be any size and your mind your eyes will see you uh something completely different like that's me there like literally i have lost a lot of weight yeah i don't see any change in me i see myself to be something completely that I'm not. I know that I do this, I can't help it. It's not as bad, but it's not something that I don't think ever really will go away. You just learn to be able to know that you're doing it and control it a little bit more. But with body dysmorphia, you will always see yourself as a worse version of something that you are. And it will make you out to be something that you are not. That what your mind perceives as not good enough. Like, it will see you as, like, I guess bigger or, like, I, I had a thing with my skin where my skin wasn't good enough. It was like I had problems with my skin, um, my size, my... Um, literally everything like I could pick any part of my body and there was something wrong with it and it was just the way that I was with my body that nothing was good enough I think some of it stems down to like what I've been through with both past relationships with family with things like that and then some of it is just your in your own mind where you can't really help it so that is body dysmorphia. It is difficult. It doesn't ever really go away, but you can with a it lot can, of work. It can go in reverse of that as well. Uh, oh, yeah. I've, I've seen uh, pictures of... <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry about that. I've seen pictures of uh, bodybuilders looking at their muscles in the mirror and seeing just a weak, scrawny... So picture mm -hmm. kind of the reverse of that, like a big hulky okay. man uh, looking in the mirror at a scrawny guy. Um, it's, yeah. I Definitely. actually knew somebody that was, like, I didn't know them personally, but I knew somebody that was affected by that, and they ended up getting addicted to steroids, trying to bulk up much more, but it was working, but they didn't see that. And they ended up nearly killing themselves. Oh. But yeah, it can work either way. 
And on some good questions so far, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I actually have some information on body dysmorphia if anyone needs that. Yeah, and we'll we'll pop all that in the Discord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Does it require medication? Shirley wants to know. Um, I did have medication. It was more antidepressants than anything. If anything, they're going to give you it's more antidepressants. Um, there isn't that I know of a specific medication for body dysmorphia, but um, antidepressants are usually their go-to for it. Um, but yeah, I've got plenty of medication. If uh, medication, no, I've got plenty of information. Plenty um, of information. I've got plenty of medication and information. But anyway, um, okay, this next one. So. This sounds like it's from somebody potentially new. It says that they saw us on Twitter. Haven't seen the show before, but we'll look out for you again to get my answer to this. I think it's amazing what you do. Anyway, my question. Ever since I was 12 years old, I started drinking and using cannabis. My mom kicked me out of the house at 13, mm. and I was homeless till I was eventually taken into care. Turns out school reported my absences. Anyway, I'm in my late 20s now, and I'm still addicted to drink and cannabis. It's really hard for me to control it all, and I don't know what to do anymore. I want to get off using both, as I feel so crap all the time. Any ideas? Thanks. So, alcohol. The, you got to work a program. Um, cannabis, I don't know much about as far as the addictive, uh, traits of it. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard that, uh, weed, cannabis, CBD, all that stuff is non addictive, um, stuff. But then I've also heard that it is very addictive. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, I, I'm not sure what to make of, of the weed, uh, or cannabis side of things. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we will definitely put some information uh, in the Discord for uh, marijuana and cannabis. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to call it a rehab program, but mm -hmm. maybe it is. Um, but definitely with the drink, the alcohol, you got to bite the bullet and you got to do a proper rehab program. I mean, I cannot speak enough about how important that was for me. Now, does everybody need to do a rehab, an inpatient rehab? No. Um, would everybody benefit from it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't fit everybody's schedule. I understand. However, uh, as a foundation, and if you have the means, I suggest it highly. Go to an inpatient rehab facility. Get started on the right foot. Steve Joker, good to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Um, I understand the hesitant or yeah, hesit hesitancy. <laughs> yeah. Can't say that word. I understand the hesitance um, that people have for rehab. Hell, I was the same way. Um, but without that rehab structured foundation, I don't think I would be as successful as I have been uh, mm -hmm. this far. So um, it's just, it's, it, it lays the groundwork for success. It gets you off on the right foot. Um, I, I really, I have to, uh, you know, tout rehab as 
the the golden option. If you have the means, if you have the um, uh, opportunities, take it. Definitely mm -hmm. take it. Um, there's EAP. That's usually, you know, through work and stuff. EAP is, is normally kind of junk. Uh, I don't want to piss around about it, but um, you really have to get in and get uh, get in with your own uh, mindset. Try and put this the right way. Um, so you want to lay the groundwork. That that was rehab for me. Mm -hmm. Perfect to start, and then you can build from that on counseling and clinicians and. Um, group therapy, uh, all these things, all these options are great uh, and have been so helpful for me. Uh, so I hope that helps in some way. Yeah. Right. You good to move on? Yeah. Cool. Let me back. Oh. This is a very similar question to what you've just answered. I'll read it out. Okay. So it's very similar. Um, I know this is different to you, Tim, but it's an addiction still. I am addicted to drugs and want to come off them. I don't know how or where to start. I have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars I don't have. My marriage is broken down. I don't see my kids anymore because of it. I've lost my job. I don't like the person I have become. When I'm desperate for a fix, it's like something takes over inside of me and makes me do things I'm disgusted with myself for. It's like I have no control over myself doing these things. The worst thing I have done is to steal money. Last month I stole my grand's rent money and now she's in arrears with her housing payments. She doesn't work and can't afford to get it. She doesn't know it was me. What shall I do and how can I stop myself and get off these drugs? They take over my life. First and foremost, I want to say hello to Heavenly Dew. I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Um, and Jim, uh, Hattie, Michael, everybody, Steve. Hello, hello. We are chugging along here on our live Q&A. Um, yes. Yeah, so this is a very similar question. <laughs> hey, buddy. Do I miss you? But uh, anyway, back to the question. Uh, rehab is just there's so much to talk about with the. I I don't I. <laughs> I I'm at a loss for words. So addiction trends and everything, all of the research and everything is out there. You can get on Google. You can look it up. Um, it really does work. Like a good, solid inpatient rehab facility mm -hmm. does work. Um, a residential program, you, you go in, you detox. You, I, I detoxed in the hospital. Um, I went through quite uh, quite a bit of shakes and sweats and everything. Um, I wasn't coming down off of some hard stuff. It was just alcohol. But alcohol can be as severe as, uh, you know, heroin. Oh, health. yeah. If but, you're addicted uh, to something, you're addicted to it. You know? um, the nausea, the everything. Mm -hmm. So I detoxed at the hospital, but... I mean, I cannot, I cannot speak enough to the foundation that you get from a inpatient rehab facility. Please, please, if you are struggling with addiction, please go to one of these facilities. Let them give, give them 
like, you know, four weeks of your life. Okay. I gave them 44 days of my life and it, it has been the best decision I have ever made. It has completely turned me around. I feel so much better. I cannot speak enough about the awesomeness that is a rehab facility. These people know what they're doing and they absolutely do a great job. I, I just, I have no words for them. They, they, I praise them. Um, they, I, mm -hmm. it was just, it was the best time. It, it really turned me around. It really did. 44 days I spent in a drug and alcohol rehab facility. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they opened my brain up. They started around. They got in there. Oh, yeah. Got me talking. And I came out like the weight of the world was off my shoulders. I, mm -hmm. I, you have to get a good foundation and then you can come out of this rehab uh, facility and work a program. You don't want to just start uh, fresh, you know. You don't want to just start, uh, hey, I'm going to just go to AA today, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do that, but this really gives you, if you're in deep, this gives you a really good foundation. Mm-hmm. To build that house, you know. Anyway, I'm just babbling uh, about the wonders that are that is rehab. So, let's continue. Yeah, I'm just put that on screen. I think that's a good comment. Yeah. Um. Right. Where are we? There are um as well. Like, I think it was mentioned before. Um, the like rehab places for self-harm and um, body dysmorphia kind of related things because I was in one for, it was about five weeks um, so you can go there for pretty much anything and like obviously mine was different but they really do work um, where are we? The screen just Joker, cracked, Joker's sorry. absolutely right um, mm -hmm. the first step is getting there so we covered that earlier on in the in the show, um, mm -hmm. hitting that rock bottom. Um, but you have to be a hundred percent you. It has to be a hundred percent you. Gemma can't tell me that I have a drinking problem and I need to go mm -hmm. to rehab. I have to tell me that I have a drink problem. I need to go to rehab. So yeah, yeah hundred percent. People try, but it doesn't work because you have to do it for yourself. Yep. It never works otherwise. Okay. All right then. Totally different topic now. I have severe anxiety about leaving the house. Ever since I was attacked whilst I was out, I struggle to leave the house at all. I don't know what to do. It wasn't helped by the lockdowns and COVID restrictions. It's been months since I left the house, not even in the garden. I don't know what I can do to help myself get better. Um, Did I lose you? No, I'm here. Oh. Okay, I'm what just, was the last part of that? Um, where are we? So ever since they were attacked, it's been difficult to get out of the house at all. They don't know what to do. Wasn't helped by the COVID restrictions and lockdowns it's been months since they've left the house not even in the garden i don't know what to do how can i help myself get better right um, um yeah do you want to go yeah uh so this this is a tough one because mm -hmm. i don't uh suffer from uh, agoraphobia. Mm -hmm. I want to call. I want to say this is agoraphobia. Um, it sounds that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't have insight in that sense, mm -hmm. but um, at the same time, 
uh, we can certainly talk about it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, can you uh, talk a little bit about it and I'll pull up a slide? Yeah, I, well, I had a little bit, um, not similar-ish kind of um, reasons. Mine was more to like, yeah, I was attacked and stuff, but mine was more down to not being allowed to leave the house. I was in a very controlling and abusive relationship to the point where he didn't let me out. And then when I was allowed out, like I didn't want to go out because I was scared to. Um, the thing that I help, found helped me, and I'm actually recording one at the moment, was to go through like a, a guided, kind of like they do meditations, but to where you sit and picture yourself doing that by going out of the house. So in the house, obviously, you would sit and you would imagine if you've got someone to talk to about it, this can help as well. And go through the process of what you'd have to do to leave the house. Like, even down to, like, getting dressed, what you're going to wear, what shoes you're going to put on. When you unlock the door, you need to lock the door. Um, like, how many keys to lock. Then how do you go, like, do you go out the gate? Is there a gate? How long's the path? Going through every little step. It might seem tedious. It might seem, like, repetitive but it does actually help and just literally take it step by step so the first time you go out say just go to your garden gate and back build that distance over time even if it takes you a long time to get even just to the end of the street you've been out you've done it so just go out of the door stand on your doorstep one day journal it as well yeah right journal write it down so say on x day i did and i went that far you can even record it on like a smartwatch how far you've done how many steps you've done for example and then on the day after or however long try and set a goal in mind but picture yourself doing it maybe the day before or whatever or even on the day and then go and do it physically but go and set like a challenge with yourself to go to the gate one day then like however many feet down the street and just keep getting something but then picture something that you really want to do like if there's a shop you want to go to or somewhere you want to go like meet a friend and have that goal in mind that I want to do this and build up to it so that mm -hmm. you are then rewarding yourself by doing this and getting to that stage where one day you get to the point where you can do this and then that feels like an, a reward really for doing it do you know what i mean yeah so that's one journaling, way. as heavenly do says journaling is helpful in so many ways you know we talk mm -hmm. about journaling on this show so many times um yeah and this, is, this is absolutely another great example of when a journal come in great use um mm -hmm. thank you uh Gemma for that mm -hmm. the first thing that comes to mind is maybe getting a therapy dog they can help you cope uh yeah absolutely um we were talking with Sarah Lightman last or two weeks ago mm -hmm. um and she was uh talking about therapy cats and dogs and, mm -hmm. and pets um such a great idea uh pets are awesome coping animals or mm -hmm. uh coping objects um there's nothing better you know man's best friend yeah you know uh, just stress it <laughs> like be stressed just by petting them and stuff just uh yeah really sort of de-stress i wouldn't recommend having a hamster if you're a live streamer like when you saw get yourself a lamb yeah this is this is my uh my newest uh addition this is a lamb with my baby's heartbeat that's so cute that's penelope's heartbeat 
That is just so cute. <laughs> anyway, I wanted to share that with y'all. Um, yeah, that's we just had so a cute. Ultrasound, and um, yeah, we got baby on the How way. long left? How long left now? Yeah. So, all right. You didn't um, hear me, did you? I said, how long have you got left? What's that? How long have you got left to wait? For Penelope? Yeah. Eight, eight weeks. Gosh, so we could see you in the very future broadcasting with baby over shoulder and sick yeah. puke, puke down you and stuff. Yep. <laughs> puke and baby. Journaling right. has helped me process fears and confusions. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the great thing about pets, they never judge and they love them. That's exactly mm. right. Uh, a dog's love or a cat's love is unconditional. Oh, and no, not so much cats. Cats will go to <laughs> yeah. feed them well, okay. generally. A, a dog, a dog's <laughs> love is unconditional. If you've got a pouch of food, they're coming. <laughs> yeah. But no, they do. Like, honestly, when my son had cancer before i honestly think that that cat knew that he wasn't like well and he always lays on his bed knowing that he's like not well and stuff and then my cats know as well when i'm not feeling good they they literally nearly fed jumped me when i came through the door because i've had a rough day and i just thought you know they know Yeah, that's a good title. I I, I think that um, Penelope will steal the show. Yes. I'm sure. So. One way or another. All right. And the next question. All right. There we go. Let's have a look. <laughs> We've still got quite a few, so this could be over an hour, I'm afraid. Oh, that's fine. Great. I'm really worried about my daughter. I think she has eating disorders, but I don't know what to look out for. Can you help? What can I do if she's got them? That's all you, Gemma. Yeah, okay. So the, t the like main ones, anorexia and bulimia. Now I've had the both. Um, initially, it was starting to make myself sick. I would... A good sign to know anybody that's got an eating disorder if you see them eat and then they disappear soon after that's a pretty good telltale sign and how people found out with me was the good old fashioned go and listen while I was in the bathroom because you can hear it um, I got clever to the fact that people maybe would smell that I'd puked so like you just mouthwash and stuff but um usually if someone's got an eating disorder they tend to disappear after they've eaten or avoiding food avoiding going out for meals stuff like that um again trying to get them to do anything about it they have to like I had to realize there was a problem. I didn't see it as a problem. I saw it as being normal. It was fine. I was in control of it to the point where it wasn't and I couldn't control it. And then anything I ate was just coming back up. I couldn't help it. And it had got to the point where I had gone that long without eating that I just wasn't interested anymore. Um, I've had bouts of it coming back, honestly, I kind of feel like it's back with me a little bit now because I am avoiding a lot of meals. Some of it's to do with my health, others because I feel like I've put weight on, so I'm having to be mindful of that. Like, write a food journal. If you're going through that, write down what you're eating. Um, it will bring in a lot of medical complications, like... If you're vomiting a lot, it can damage your teeth. It can damage like your mouth. You can get really a really sore mouth. Then obviously there's the other stuff that it can cause with your body. Um, I've got quite a lot that I can put in the Discord regarding health and um, like problems around that. 
tried setting alerts. Yeah, I've actually got an app on my phone that I use when I've not. Um, it checks in with me like three, four times a day to um, log what I've eaten. Um, is it Fitness Pal or something like that? Something like that that will tell me that I need to uh, log what I've eaten. And then I'll be like, have I eaten? No, I haven't. Um, so I'm very good at that because you be you come you become to get to the stage where sometimes you don't actually remember. Um, but again, it's very much something that the person's got to realize you can help them. Yeah. By like talking about it, I guess, but just be mindful of how you do that because again, nobody likes to feel judged or attacked. Um. I know when I had somebody mention it to me, I'm like, no, I haven't. Don't be, don't talk rubbish. And I didn't want to accept it. Rubbish. And then it's not until what triggered it for me when I, I went to the dentist because I had I had quite bad toothache. And with being sick, I'd been damaging my teeth. And in the end, I had to have one extracted because I damaged it that much because of constant vomiting so that was like oh, what's going on here and then constant mouth sores and things and it was starting to cause a lot of pain my stomach was constantly cramping but then if you're not eating properly it can just cause loads of other problems constant tiredness um sure. like loads and loads of problems so um we mentioned it before with the eating disorders and things episode didn't we but um yeah. just like yeah it, it, there's so many other problems that can stem from it if it goes on for so long but definitely try journaling and if yeah. it's somebody else that's doing it if you're not sure then just try and mentally take a note of what they do when they've eaten and stuff like if they're disappearing a lot things like that yeah I hope that helps. Do you want to add anything? No, that sounded cool. really good. Oh, right. Next one. What is the best way to deal with bullies and being bullied? I get myself really upset when it happens and I end up not dealing well with it. How can I deal with it and not get so upset? All right. So bullies are hey badger lindsay badger in the house and uh brian brian <laughs> brian uh yes bullies are gonna be there they're, uh -huh. it's, it's, it's just throughout life we need bullies we need trolls we need everybody to step up and do their so, thing. Have it. <laughs> so the best way to deal with a bully is to not care. <laughs> it really is. It it so snuffs out their flame. Yeah, they get bored. It it just there's nothing a bully or a troll hates more than not getting a reaction. If mm -hmm. if somebody's bullying you and you just like psh, I don't care. Ella! Ella's in the house. Um, then there's nothing there to bully. There, just snuff that flame out. Have a good day, sir. We'll see you next time. Don't give them the time of day. If you continue to uh, show them that that bothers you, they're going to keep on keeping on and mm -hmm. they're going to keep aggravating you and it's going to keep snowballing. If you just say, Hey, not today, man, this doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, nothing they can do. So take that for what it's worth. That's how you handle a bully. Hey man, you want to, you want to be uh, toxic, Go over there and have fun. Mm. 
we're going to be over here having a good time. If you want to turn that attitude around, you can come on and join us. But till then, see ya. Yeah, if it gets Not bad, now. Molly's just said, then definitely like report it. Um, Self defense is always good. Yeah. Um, but definitely be reporting it if anything gets physical. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, no, I don't. There's no reason for trolls or bullies to bother anybody. Okay. We're adults. <laughs> it can be hard at times. Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm speaking from experience here. Um, but yeah, like, try not to let it get to you because one thing I've learned that a lot of the time people are just, they do things because they're either jealous or they want to get a reaction from you. If you don't give them that, they do move on for definite. Um, but yeah, just what you said, don't. If they, if you oh. snap the flame out. Then bye bye. Yeah. Go to sleep. See <laughs> punk. The punk. Go to sleep. Yeah. All, All right. right. Next one. I get really stressed out all of the time to the point where I I can have a full on anxiety attack, and when that happens, I just can't control them at all anymore how can i stop this happening so you get stressed out anxiety you gotta it sounds like you need a release um exercise punching bag um some kind of aggression release heavenly do thank you for cheering the hundred bits appreciate it i'm sorry i didn't see that um i got two windows going uh, thank you so much, Heavenly Do. Appreciate it. Um, and thank you, everybody, for the subs, the bits, the shares, the likes, the mm -hmm. uh, promos, all of the good stuff. We love you all. We are so happy to be here. Um, <laughs> Jim and <Ch> CM Punk. <laughs> yeah. That's what this shirt is. Heavenly Do wants a shirt. This is a CM Punk shirt. Um, Anywho, uh, back to the question. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, I get really stressed out all of the time. Oh, yeah, stress. I can have full-on anxiety attacks, can't control them. How can I stop this happening? Yeah. So, um, obviously, I would we, – we are not medical professionals here. I would mm – -hmm. I would uh, – like to direct you towards a medical professional uh perhaps uh talk to your mm -hmm. general practitioner uh or maybe a psychiatrist and talk about uh you know lay out your day and and what kind of goes on what your agenda looks like and uh see if there's any medications that could help uh, with depression or anxiety. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times anxiety is good. Uh, anxiety is a big fancy word that means worry. And mm -hmm. when we worry about things, we get shit done. So when we worry about the paying the bills, we pay the bills, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. so we get anxious. So you see what I'm saying? Like anxiety gets shit done. So anxiety has its place, but too much anxiety, it, it definitely can, you know, rah, get, mm -hmm. get to be too much at some point. So yeah, you can definitely tone that down uh, with some medication. Talk to your general practitioner um, or um, your family doctor. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, definitely. And again, journaling. The again, journaling, yep. definitely. That helps. That helps loads. 
and it can really help with the stress and the worry, especially if you're not sure quite what it is. Ooh, a hype train. What is Thank you guys for the hype train. Ray of Sunshine, Ella the Bunny Mom, and Jim in Chicago, Heavenly Do. We got a hype train going. I don't even know what one of those is. I'm still not learning <laughs> of Twitch lingo. Yeah. Uh, well, what's the next mental health question? Yes. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. Mm. All right. We have. Pardon, Emma. It is. Yes. <laughs> it is uh, twelve oh five over there, midnight. Yes. Okay. I am mar I am married and I have a kid, but I have known for a while that I am gay. I don't know how to tell my other half. Do I even tell them? Am I best living a lie to keep the family happy, or should I be true to myself? What do I do as I have lived this lie for over five years and it's literally eating me up? Bro, you gotta you gotta get out there and, and be you. Mm -hmm. You gotta be true to you. Um I don't I don't really know what what do you think, Gemma? Heavenly do, wow. Having a child and knowing that like I don't know how they don't say how old the child is, but from a very young age, they're not stupid, aren't kids, and they will sense that there's something wrong. Yeah. Because try as you might, if you're not happy, you are in like as much as you try, you're gonna portray that you're not happy in that situation. And if you're considering these things about getting out and do I be true to myself and things like that, no matter what you do, you're going to be unhappy in that situation. That's going to then pass on to your child as much as you try not to, because I've done that. I've been there myself, done that, tried not to let Thomas see that I've been worried about something or whatever, but they, they caught on. They're not stupid, aren't kids? So they will know. And, as long as the child has both parents in their lives, it's better to have two parents that are happy and not together than two parents that are unhappy together, causing arguments and upset and like tension. It's better that they are separate in different homes, but together when it comes to the childcare and make sure that that childcare continues work out a better like a strategy for that like a plan of like who has the child when and like make sure it's concrete it is much better to be like that than to be living a lie being unhappy being in that situation where you can't get out or you feel like you can't get out of it and you're passing that on indirectly to your child and in the end, there's no winners for that. So it is always better to be honest in a situation like that, I think. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. Wow. Guys, thank you so much for all the bits and the hype train. We're, oh, gosh. we're at a level three hype train. I've never, I've never seen this actually work. And I don't exactly know what it means, but thank you. We appreciate it. As I've uh, as I've said uh, several times, all the money that you guys uh, throw in, all the bits, all the subs, everything goes right back into the show, goes right back to you guys. Um, we want to make this show the best show that we can. Um, and so we, we keep uh, our stream yard purchase um, and our Twitch and everything. Um, with cameras and microphones and everything to bring you the best mental health hour show that we can in our 40th episode. Mm. Uh, this is uh, so awesome. So thank you for all the support, all the love level three hype train. You guys are the best. Um, uh, and let's get back to the mental health. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Well, no. well, we're not oh. doctors. Have some of us talk to. Feel free. Okay. Yeah. This one I'm gonna have to change up a little. 
and okay. it's quite long, so bear with me. Okay. <clears throat> right, this is hard for me to write. I need some advice on how to tell someone who is a friend that I only want to be friends. They have made it really clear that they want more of a friendship and they have said they will move states and that they will wait for me. But I'm honestly not looking for a relationship. I don't see them that way. When I go live, they are very obvious with what they say to me, that they have feelings for me, and it's putting people off coming into my broadcasts. They have reached out saying as much. I find it super awkward to say anything and don't want to look like an asshole, but I can't be dealing with all of this on top of all the stuff that I have going on. Um, bear with me. I have been through a really difficult breakup and I'm not looking for any relationships right now. I don't see them like that anyway. How can I tell them that I just want to be friends and that they need to calm down a bit as they are becoming excessive sometimes? I find it really difficult to watch when they are in a crowd as they sometimes feel like I, as I sometimes feel like they call the shots, making them make rash decisions that they might that might not be their own. How can I stop the overwhelming and sometimes overbearing comments and just get them to chill out without upsetting without upsetting them and looking like the asshole? Sorry. I didn't want to like read it as it was sent. Okay. It was quite difficult. So what's the what's the meat of this one? Okay, so they have somebody that is wanting more than a friendship. Um, it seems like they're becoming a bit full on and sending messages that they're finding inappropriate. They want to know how best to tell them to calm down and that they don't want a relationship without so upsetting them. They it's say a friend it's zone. Yeah, friend zoning. So you just got to basically sit them down and, and let them know exactly how you feel. Um, let them. There's a. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a yes. Thank you. Heavenly do has got it right there. Boundaries yeah. is the word of the mm -hmm. uh, hour here. Set mm -hmm. your boundaries. Let them know. Uh, you can't uh, be mad at somebody for not knowing exactly what you're feeling if you haven't put them out there in the rule books, in the boundaries, mm -hmm. in the lines, in the fence lines. So. Um, Yes, you got to uh, get out there and talk to this person and let them know that the boundaries that you have set are such, you know, this, that, and the other, and uh, go from there. Until then, you can't get mad at anybody for not knowing the rules if there's mm -hmm. no rules set. So you set the boundaries. And make them known. Make them known. Don't be afraid. Boundaries are so important. I've learned that. Uh, in my first marriage, I was terrible at that. Uh, the boundaries were... Not, that word did not exist. Um, I've since learned that uh, boundaries ha plays a huge role in, in this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes. Heavenly Dew has said it. Uh, correct. Boundaries don't have to keep you out. Rather, they're inviting you in. Just don't cross the line. Mm -hmm. All right. What is the next question? Yeah. Pull it up. All right. Um, did we like this one's not really a question. 
Okay. I don't know what to do with this one. I'll read it, but it's not really a question. Um, someone who I am friends with has been spreading lies and misinformation about someone else and trying to damage them and the friendships they have. I have told my friend to stop it because I don't like that kind of thing and I don't like to think this person I don't think this person deserves all Oh, sorry, I'm trying to read this properly. Deserves to have all this on them, but I don't know what to do. Hopefully, the people who have listened to the lies will realise that it's a load of lies and stop listening and stop spreading them. I don't but it's getting me down because they are calling me stuff. I won't get involved and it reminds me of when I was a freshman and was bullied real bad, and it's kind of triggering. So, Wait. it's not really a question, but I think they're just saying that, again, regarding the bullying and stuff, like their friends are spreading lies and bullying, I guess, somebody else that they're friends with. If they don't like it, I guess they don't know what to do. They're yeah. hoping that it will stop. Yeah, I mean, we can uh, take a look at that and reach out to whomever. Uh, whoever sent that, please feel free to reach back out to us and give us some further information. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no real question there. So, um, but bullies, like I said, bullies will not be... Uh, you can easily put out that fire. You can snuff out a bully's fire by just smothering it. Mm -hmm. and, and if anybody is your friend, if someone's telling them lies or misinformation and they are your true friend, it won't affect them. Do you know what I mean? If they're your real friend and they hear something about you, at the very least, they will ask you. Yep. How many mm -hmm. do we have left there, Gemma? Uh, Two more, this one and then one more. All right. All right, okay. I've started self-harming again. Just low-level stuff at the moment, but I'm worried it's going to get where I can't control it and get more and more dangerous. I don't know what to do. Okay. Um, so self-harming. Self-harming is a... Uh, um, that is a Gemma topic. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you speak on this one, Gemma. Okay, so self-harming. I have done it for many, many years. I um, started when I was very young, and I started with the low-level stuff. Um, what you do want to do is try and avoid getting to the situation where you're going to cause harm or potentially cost your life. The only thing that I can really say to do with that is try and get some help with that. Try, like, go and see a doctor. Get some, maybe some antidepressants if it's needed. Again, it's not a one-size-fits-all around antidepressants. Don't be afraid to say it's not working, but then you do have to give it time. I believe they take around six months or so to get into your system really well. So... Do give them a go, but then if they're not working, they're not helping, or they're causing you any sort of side effects that aren't pleasant, tell the doctor. But regarding the self-harming, try try journaling for a start. Write down what it is that's bothering you. Try distraction techniques. Like if you are to the stage where you are feeling like you're going to self-harm, try doing something else. I know it sounds silly, but maybe if you're in a situation where you can go for a walk, listen to some music. I find music very helpful. Um, but at the worst case scenario, and you really have to, because I understand this, and I'm not for one minute saying that you should do this um, or anything. However, if you really need that ouch factor like I did, the only thing I can recommend for a safe way out is to try an elastic band or something and just because it gives you the 
Ow, because I used to do it for the taking the pain away from like in here and in here and trying to control it to where I could be like, that hurts, but it's not in here. And that's what I used to do. Or oh, holding ice really tight. Just again, it's not going to cause you any long term damage. It's not going to cause you anything like, like if you're cutting and stuff, you don't want to do that. But definitely, definitely try and go to a doctor, try and talk to someone, try and open up about it. Mm -hmm. um, reach, reach out to somebody that you think you can trust. Yeah. Um, but definitely, definitely try and get the medical help because there are things out there and there are groups as well that deal with like self-harming. I've been to one myself. I didn't, I was skeptical. I didn't think it would work, but it actually helped. And it helps to know there's other people around you that are in the same boat as well. So definitely like try and connect with somebody, um, connect with other people, talk yeah. to someone, confide in someone, you know. Absolutely. You're not alone out there. You don't have to suffer on your own. Okay. Do you want to add anything? No, that was good. Cool. All right. Last question. Okay. What is the best way to get out and you uh, oh, get out of an abusive relationship without things getting real nasty? What is the best way to get out of an abusive relationship without things getting real nasty? Um, you need to get an exit plan. I I think. Um, mm. You need, you need help uh, if if you have friends, family, um, sisters, brothers, um, get get some help and mm. reach out. Do not be afraid to reach out for help. Yeah, you're in an abusive relationship. You need to uh, get the police involved. I mean, mm. anything, anything. There are agencies out there, depending on where you're based, that will deal with domestic abuse. Yeah. I was in the same situation. Um, and I had confided in somebody, and they had then made a police plan. I don't know what it's called anywhere else, but I know here it's called a MARAC. And you're placed on a tier of high, medium, or low risk. Um. And that way, if you phone the police and you are named as a, having a Marak, that's all you need to say. Or you don't even have to say anything. I'm not sure if it works the same for America. But here, if you phone the emergency services, which is 999 in the UK, and you can't speak, you press 55, and then they will trace your call. You don't have to say a word. Um so that's one thing to remember. I will look up if there is anywhere, anything like that in the US. Like, I don't know if anyone knows, but definitely try and work an exit strategy. Speak to a friend, maybe someone you know you can confide in. Um, figure things out. Try and safely put stuff to one side, maybe. Like, I don't know, money or anything, just so that if you have to go, then you have something but I'm at the same strategy time, ready okay. you gotta get that yeah you gotta get that plan in place like Gemma's mm -hmm. saying and and sisters brothers uh cousins anybody that can help uh, mm -hmm. get, but yeah if it's getting real bad don't stick around for long if at all yeah like get out and then yeah. like deal with like any possessions and stuff later possessions are like material they can be replaced your life cannot if you are right. in immediate help phone the police yep immediate help immediate danger this is the wrong word immediate danger yes yeah immediate danger phone the police uh but police, yeah definitely police, police are always your first um Mm -hmm. but if if there's if there if you're in immediate danger absolutely 100% go for the police 
But mm -hmm. if this has like been a long time coming, please just reach out to somebody, your friends, um, sisters, like I said, and just reach out for help. It's the mm -hmm. hardest thing we have to do as human beings is ask somebody else for help. Mm -hmm. But it really does make the biggest difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, it's I just need help. Alone. Yeah. I need help. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. Definitely the hardest thing to ask. But definitely very beneficial when yeah. you get that help and you can start seeing a change. And it can be anyone that you trust. Anyone that you trust. Or like if you've got to go see a doctor or go to the police, confide in someone that you trust, and then maybe they can go with you, you yeah. know, so it's not so difficult. Even write it down. If, if you need to go see a doctor and you don't know how to say it, write it down and then give them it, like, anything. You know? Yeah. That was the last question, though. That was it? Oh, that my. I love these shows. They're my favorite. My yeah. absolute favorite. We should do another one in time. We will. I would like to start doing one of these a month, maybe. We'll start each month with a live Q and A, or yeah. we'll figure it out. We'll let's do a poll in the Discord. And yes. We'll, we'll get it. Uh, we'll see what what the community wants. I want to thank everybody that was here tonight. I want to thank everybody for the hype train. I want to thank all of our participants the, for sending in the questions. Um, I want to thank all my mods here on the Mental Health Hour. Hattie, great job. Uh, you're doing an amazing job. Thank you for uh, joining on the team. Um, and Ella, Ella the bunny mom. Ella the bunny mom. We've got the bunnies. We've got the bunnies. The bunnies. You know what time it is? It's almost Easter. What yeah. is Easter? Easter is bunny time. I've bunny never time. Can we uh, can we throw mm -hmm. up the banner here for I love the, the bunny mom? www.mybunnyvalentine.com. Use the promo code FireDude15 and you can get. Fit. Why can't I turn there? This guy is a Bluetooth bunny. He's a speaker. I have that one. Yeah, you can play music through your phone. Mm -hmm. um, we got bunnies and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, electronics. There's stickers. There's um, there's there's a little badges. I have my badge on my coat. I I have so much stuff. Um, there's okay. masks and Ella just sent uh, a bunch of masks for my stepdaughter. Loves these masks the bunny valentine masks um so we love our ella we love everybody that comes in to the stream and don't forget tonight jim in chicagoland will be doing his catalyst on twitch tonight at 11 p.m eastern standard time 8 p.m pacific um and we have all the bunnies <laughs> Easter is upon us. There's so much going on. And before Easter comes, my baby Penelope will be making... That's my baby's heartbeat. Is that not the wildest shit ever? I did not know you could get anything like that. That is so cool. Anyway... It's been a fun one tonight, guys. I have really enjoyed it. It Just like every week, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for being here. Thanks for the community. Thanks to Heavenly Dew for stopping in. And, and thanks to Ray of Sunshine. Thanks to Jim in Chicagoland. Thanks to Molly. Thanks to Shirley. Thanks to Ella. Thanks to everybody. I don't want to miss people. I, I'm, I'm always going to miss somebody. 
Thank you to everyone that sent the questions too. Yeah, everybody that sent questions. And you can keep doing that because we will have more shows. Yeah, we're going to keep doing these. Thank you, Lindsay Badger. Thank you, Hattie. Thank you, everybody. Oh my goodness. You guys are literally the best. Mm -hmm.